So dude, I just want to talk about uh, studded tires for a bit. So specifically about uh, uh, 20 by 4 inch fat tire uh, wheels that can be studded. Um, and specifically for bikes like uh, Coast Cycles or um, Super 73 or, or Fatty Cycle. Um, their Monster Mid-Drive uh, has a studded option, studded tire option, uh, but you need to contact them about that. So I'm going to show you what I do. Um, in the winter for my fat tire bikes. Also talk about why um, to do it this way um, and where it applies. Um, so it's really kind of something that you fancy schmancy Southern California Super 73 riders will will probably never know or have to deal with. But uh, that's the thing. So we live in tough environments. It makes you tough and uh, your equipment has to be tough too so that you can ride tough. And that's the way it is and that's, that's uh, what we got. So that's what we like. Um, so for example, studded tires, let's talk about the application real quick, um, before I show you the fat tire. So this is a Schwab, Schwelb or Schwabe, however you want. I've heard German speaking people pronounce this word, uh, many different ways. So pick and choose, uh, do whatever you want, but this is for a road bike. So this is an example of a studded tire that is factory built. So as you can see, these studs are super low profile. They almost don't stick out, but when your weight is on these tires, these little studs will stick out. So I've heard some chatter about um, the difficulties of studying your own tires and that you shouldn't because you're going to lose studs. But I'm going to let you know that I run these on our two road bikes um, that we have in the winter. Um, and I've put on, I think estimates are five to 6,000 kilometers on one of these and not a single stud is missing, but also Schwelb. Schwabe, they uh, they say on their description that replacement spikes are available. So even these, if you run them hard enough, you're gonna lose uh, your spikes or your studs. So you can get replacements for these. The downside of studying your own tires is that you're more likely to lose them because they're either going to be screwed from the inside, which is going to cause all sorts of problems with flat tires, unless you do it really, really well, or you're going to be screwing from the, the outside in, which could cause some problems with flat tires, but if you do it properly, you'll, you'll do it deep enough that you'll try to keep as many possible studs throughout your winter uh, so as to not have to replace them. So taking an example from uh, city, city riders and, and bike couriers, whenever you're going to do something with your bike, always look at bicycle messengers. It's a good rule of thumb because these dudes and dudettes are like crazy. They go out when it's you know below zero, um, and they're just riding like like crazy people, and they do it and they love it. So often they only tread their front tire. So in the winter they, most of them don't even have studs that I've seen, but they put treaded tires on their front only. And I'm going to demonstrate outside of my fat tire bike why that's the case, um, and even on my road bike a little later on. But some of them stud their tires, and they're not going to buy these things, you know, $150 a pop for both their front and rear. They're just going to put this on their front. And that's because you, you don't really care if you spin out in the back as much as you would care if you slipped out on your front and went sideways um, at an angle and dumped it bad. So you're more likely to dump it by sliding out on your front than your rear. So if you're going to stud a tire, you're going to put money, time, and energy into it, just stud your front. All right, so that's the, the 735C. So now moving up to the fat tires. So here are Mission Command V tires. These have seen two other seasons before. So the tread is starting to wear. So what I like to do when it comes to that is stud the tires. So you're gonna see two different types of studding and you can see the difference. So on the right, is just the exterior lines. So take a note from bike couriers. That's what they do. They don't go right down the middle because as the curvature of the tire, your studs are going to pop out. Uh, you're going to wear your studs down. You don't need studs right in the middle. So these guys put them on the side. And that's so when you turn, your studs are going to grip into the ice, the slippery pavement, the snow, whatever's there. So that's what you want when you're studying your own tires. So this is gonna be used on my back tire. 
I don't mind blowing donuts a bit and slipping around, but as long as when I'm doing a corner, it's gonna catch on the sides. So save money, time, and energy, and just stud on your sides. However, just like the road tire I showed you, for front tire only biking, which is what we do with our road bikes, like, like a lot of bicycle couriers and messengers, here's the front tire of my fat tire bike. So as you can see the difference, rear tire, nothing in the middle, front tire, that extra grip. So again, nothing down the center beads, but it's gonna be just off center. So there's three sets, th three rows of studs, off center, in the middle, and then the very, very side. So that's, that's major turning. Like I'm probably not gonna do that unless I'm trying to purposefully go down and like blow some donuts on the ice or something like that. But just for safety's sake, you want some studs in the side more so than in the middle, so that when you do slip, it's gonna catch. So again, that's the pattern that I prefer. So it's like tiger stripes down, in line with the direction of the tread. Some guys prefer um, reverse direction because they feel that your, your drive tire in the back is pushing, but your front tire is, uh, is kind of pulling. So they're gonna want reverse, that's what they prefer. I don't, I'm not a super, super aggressive off-road rider. So unless you're doing, this is city studying, like this is for ice and like slippery sidewalks and stuff. This is not for deep snow. If you want deep snow, I'll throw up a photo of uh, what you would want for, uh, sorry, for, for like pure ice. If you're just gonna go bomb around on a lake or something, you could try this. But if you're just uh, gonna casually cruise around the city all winter, this is what I would do. So I'm gonna show you how I do this and the kit that I use. So when you buy a stud kit, I get I buy them in bulk um, from a company. This company also sells them on Amazon. So I'm gonna put a link in the description below. They come in a hundred pack. And also here's a photo of it on a kitchen scale. So you can show when you put a hundred of these bad boys in, how heavy your tire becomes after that. So I'm not too worried about heavy. I'm 230 pounds, I'm a big dude. So what is an extra, I don't know, 11 ounces or something to me? That's like that's like half a breakfast for, for me. So I don't really even care. But these are the studs. And I'm gonna show you just a quick little, I'm gonna zoom in here so that you can see what they look like. So there's a screw on one end and the stud on the other. And these babies, these babies are super tiny. So the threaded part is only nine millimeter. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put that right in your tread. So these kits come with a bit that can be fitted on your drill or your screwdriver. That's what it looks like. I got a bunch of these kits. So I've got stud bits coming out my nose, but so this is it. They're hexagonal on one side, they fit in the bit, and that's it. So I'm gonna demonstrate on my rear tire, I left a few so that I could show you what's going on. So I'm gonna put one and two in here. I'm gonna to try to get that on camera. So if you're kind of a big crybaby with limpy fingers, then um, you could use a block, let's say use this piece of wood, in the back on the inside and push against it. If I were to do that method, what I would do is I'd take a Sharpie, yes, a Sharpie, Dwight Schrute reference there, and I would mark off one line on your bit so that you can count maybe 10 or 12 rotations because you're not gonna feel it with your finger on the other side, it just barely popping through. So you wanna start it, put some pressure against your thumb, It's just coming. I can just feel it with my left hand. I'm gonna give it another rotation or three quarters of a rotation and pop that bad boy off. And that's it. So like I said, if you have wimpy, limpy fingers, that's okay. You just use a wooden block on the other side, but you're gonna to have to mark your bit so that you can go slow and count how many rotations roughly, right? So one-handed speed reload. 
and let's hit, hit this bad boy again. So this is my rear tire, studs only on the outside, outside middle, I'd say. Done, cool. And that's that. So winter tires are all set. Rear, front, what you're gonna do too, because you're sticking a sharp object in your tire, you're putting it in the tread, but because you're putting a sharp object in your tire, what you're gonna to wanna to do is get some Mr. Tuffy uh, tire liners and just put those in with your, your wheel build, just in case, and make sure you maybe even double up. Or what you can do, and or I should say, is have popped tires, so you have old popped tires, don't throw those guys out, slit them down the middle with a razor blade, put your new tube in, uh, around the, the old tire. So you, you double up or even triple up. So in my case, I like uh, to keep things really safe um, because I go on long excursion, excursions, you know, like 60 to 100 kilometers a day um, with, with sometimes even a cargo trailer. So if I get a pop out in the field, it sucks. You do not want that. Um, I bring everything that I need, but at the same time, I still triple tube it. So a double tube it, triple tube it, whatever you want. It's gonna add weight to your tires, but if you're a big dude like me, a big tubby, don't worry about it. It's just extra protection. So that's that. I'm gonna change these out and I'm gonna see you out on the ice.